Hey everybody, welcome back to Champion Sons and our new NCAA coaching dynasty since the last one got deleted. Now we are bringing back one of the original players from our very first series that we ever did. Uh, in the Madden, I think it's 20 face of the franchise series about three years ago, a little more at this point. It is going to be Bubba Champion. He is coming back as an offensive coordinator and going to work his way up. Um, some of y'all may remember him from that series, although to be fair, not a whole lot of people saw that series. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is at this point, right? Um, but he did lead Texas to the playoffs and almost to a national title before being drafted by the Dolphins, in which his first season wasn't that great, but he did get some wins and was almost able to get them into the playoffs in year one. So he is going to be an offensive coordinator. We do have his alma mater as Texas, and we are going to be playing a little bit more aggressive style of a pass offense. Um, we might have to change that as we go because that's just how things go. You evolve as a coach, and so he may end up being doing that as well. But we are going to get him um, coaching out. Now, like the last series, we are starting out as an offensive coordinator. However, unlike the last series, um, before we were a starting out with a big-time program. But in reality, coming on, you know, not the greatest success in the world in the NFL or um, – in college football without winning a national title we are going to start him out at a smaller school now we're keeping him in with his texas roots um, so he is going to be the offensive coordinator of north texas how many years are we going to be there i'm not really sure it's going to kind of depend on one how good we uh, go with the offense and it's going to depend on what job offers are available during the carousel so we'll have to see May maybe he just stays for one year maybe he stays for like three or four it, it's one of those who knows. Um, we'll have to check out to see how things kind of go along here, right? So, first little upgrade, he is going to go with, um, I guess, a tempo one to kind of keep everybody in, in check, keep them, you know, going their stamina pretty well, at least on the offensive side. Now, we are going to have to take a look at the schedule, and I want it to match as much as we can have it with uh, the way the schedules work works out this year, right? It's not going to be perfect. Because I did realize halfway through I didn't add a couple teams into the Conference USA that I should have, but that's life. So, first game we do put it against California. Um, they do travel to North Texas this season, it looked like, from when I looked it up. So, they will be coming to Apogee Stadium in week one of the season. Now, week two, the way this kind of works out is a little weird. So, week two in real life, I think it's Navy. Or not Navy, or it may be FIU, someone like that. Um... So I wanted to put in a team that's obviously not a powerhouse team, uh, but that's not a cupcake type team either. So knowing that we do have Navy on the schedule at some point, I do look to see who is available um, for a week two slot. And since Navy is available, we do decide to go ahead and play Navy in week two on the road. Now, looking at their schedule that they have right now, they do have one FCS team. So that's what we're going to add in is just one. In this sense, it's kind of trying to pick which ones do I want to go with. Um, so I go with the Midwest, the little... No, I actually go with the Southeast, the Pirates. Although I think they're called the Colonels, what have you. And then normally we... North Texas generally gets paid plenty of money to go to a different... Go to a big name Power 5 school to get their butt whipped. And so that's what we're going to try to do um, with Georgia. They did play them back in the 2013, I guess, 2014 schedule. And so that's what we stuck with is we, we're going to keep Georgia on the schedule. We're going to do our best to go in and shock the college world. Downside is, like I said, we are only the offensive coordinator. So that's all we're going to be playing is um, the offensive side right now. And then after that, we're going to have our bye week that's going to lead then into um, conference play, which... I mean, it's Conference USA, right? So it's not going to be the toughest conference in the world, um, these guys. But for our team, it's definitely not the easiest conference for our team that we have. Um, so it's going to require us to play pretty well and be pretty tough, um, at least on the offensive side. We're going to have to put up some points. Now, we are playing on Heisman difficulty. 
Um, I haven't really adjusted the slider, so it's your base Heisman. Everything is at like 50 or whatever um, for both sides. I kind of keep it like that. It, it makes you pay for making stupid decisions um, with the ball on offense. So I think it works out pretty well. And it's, and it's one of those that you do have to adjust and you do have to get your players brought up if you want um, to succeed. Now, here we are with red shirting players, right? And we have so many guys. All of our quarterbacks so far have red shirted for at least a year. And now we still have two juniors and two sophomore red shirts with one other sophomore. So I figure, what the hell, red shirt that kid because we really don't need that many um, at this stage of the game. Now, coming in, Isaiah Johnson in the halfback. He is just a sophomore right now. So we are going to also redshirt him to give him that extra year of eligibility and some other time to develop. Uh, while everybody else is still a sophomore or junior, it just helps to increase our depth. Maybe not so much this year, but in the future. right? Looking at our offensive line, once again, man, it, I, I'm not going to say it's slim pickings. It's just definitely not stacked full of talent with most of our guys being in the low 70s. Um, we're going to have to look to get rid of the ball quickly. The downside to that is... If your quarterback's not that accurate and you get rid of the ball quickly, it's going to lead to interceptions. That's just the name of the game. Like, that's how it goes. And so now, um, looking at the defensive side, you know, it, it's one of those, I don't really want to worry too much about that side. Let that uh, side be what it is. So most of the guys we go to head red shirt are going to be on the offense. So uh, that's kind of how we stuck to it. Now with um, the recruiting board, right, this – the, we're the offensive coordinator. Normally, we would go out and do some recruiting, but we're not going to be the primary when it comes to recruiting. Now, as far as where do we need to stand to actually select guys to recruit? Okay, that's always kind of a rule that you generally want to set into place. Definitely for a four star, one, we're not going to recruit any five stars um, unless we're the first on their board but that's never going to be the case right now especially not with north texas no five star will ever have north texas as their uh first choice right um but for that as y'all saw the four star guy at the very top we were his first choice in primary school so for that point i did decide you know going ahead and recruit him if he, if we're in the top three right and you're one of the higher level recruits such as a four-star guy we will select you at that point because you're we're in your top three if we're outside of your top three then no you basically are going to be a board filler um at that point yeah yeah and, and in general really we'll go with some two-star guys at that a lot i think i think we can pull in a lot of three-star talent with the team that we have and the schedule that we have we can convince a lot of three-star talent to come um and be a part of our team so I, I do think we have that capability you know one of the team needs that we have for is center and he's six on our board he's a three star but we need centers we need them so yeah we're six but so i go ahead and select them at that point um looking at some of the linebackers man you know this is where stuff gets to be slim pickings generally i like to go with just the best that are available out there but you know we can't always do that and so it, it makes it a little bit more difficult now middle linebacker we are going to need some guys we don't have a whole lot of them okay so a couple two-star guys um the three star you know it, it's one of those things where now we're just kind of filling spaces anybody that we're not in the top three i'll be honest there's really not much of a chance we have i, I don't see of becoming their their choice their selection i just don't see it um i mean i guess hey anything is possible right some of these guys um they're definitely not going to be recruited by the big name schools but it, it's one of those things where man we just kind of need <laughs> we need to get the board filled up with people that at least have some form of an interest in north texas denton is not the it's a great college town and i went to north texas for a while it it is a great town and a really good school, but athletic-wise, it's not going to get you on TV all that much unless you're playing a team like Georgia or a Texas or an Alabama or Kansas State. Unless you're playing a Power Five, you, you really ain't going to be on the TV box except for maybe once in a season. 
Um, so that's why it's kind of hard to decide to go to those schools, and that's why you don't really see them um, be, it being the top choice for a lot of prime time athletes, you know. So we're kind of filling in our board here, taking what we this is a kind of take what you can get, knowing what we need um, to pick up, knowing who we need. We're you know, you got 35 slots. A lot of these guys, we are first on their board. Um, some of them, we're going to end up dropping them as recruiting goes. One, either they decide they don't want to go to our school that much, so we start trailing behind other schools. And two, once we get into scouting these guys, if they're not something worth having, we're probably not going to, you know, bring them on. Like, why would we at that point? You know, it's it is just one of those. Why would we do that? So we we're probably going to drop some of these guys as we go. Um, off the board it's just you know they kind of blend in with the rest of the group right now and if you notice a lot of these guys the rankings the guys that are being selected well, they're top 2,000 <laughs> which I guess in the grand scheme in reality in the in the state of Texas can't be all that horrible right um, knowing how big some of these schools and teams are so top 2,000 that's where we're going some guys top five hundy that's gonna be a rare pool for us but hey I think we can make it happen. Um, we do have to be smart with it. I am probably going to let the coach handle that, especially once we get to the signing day portion. Um, so I won't be going through doing all that much. I will stick in and check in on the recruiting here or there just to see where we're at, what's going on with it, and how many points are being spent on certain guys um, and so forth, and getting visits set up because I do think we would have to worry about that. We'll take that off the coach's shoulders some. Oh, look at that. Antoine Chase and Andy Reynolds. First two on the board scouted and two gems found, followed up by a bust. Oof. Bo McMahon, 67. That's not actually too bad. A lot of these guys, one, I want to see, you know, not so much what their star quality is, but where do they rank after the first scouting segment? Like Tariq Thomas is a bust. Daniel McGill as a center, 69 overall. He's decent. We can get him developed. By his junior year, he'll be an 80 or so uh, overall, really in the Conference USA and in North Texas for what we have our needs for. That would be about premier for where we need to be at. So now that our recruiting is set, our schedule is set, we're going to get ready to get this season kicked off and started. That will happen in the next episode versus Cal at home. So stay tuned for that. Once again, thank you all for all the support. Sorry, I lost the got had the uh, Florida State file deleted. It happens. Tried to recover it, just couldn't make that work. Uh, but thank y'all for all the support. Y'all, I know y'all are going to enjoy this series just as much as that one. And so I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. So as always, everybody, stay safe and well. Y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all. <laughs>